Hello everyone, and welcome to this assembly and painting video for Kingdom Death Monsters Gorm. This is, well, the Gorm uh, from the, one of the original expansions of Kingdom Death Monster. The Gorm expansion. You know, not really too big on the names and everything. Most of them are just named after whatever monster they're from or the armor set in the case of the green armor. But here to start with is the Gorm assembly. Obviously, for some weird reason, the junk is a separate piece, but that was just a simple thing out of the way than the two halves of the body put together. After some finagling there, I realized it would be easier to glue the pieces of the back legs, which are separate pieces from, well, its ass, onto the back side, and then glue that, which I'm now holding in the video, as a whole onto the main part of the body. It just ended up working easier that way. This model was really weird in terms of putting together and everything like that, and also ended up, as I waste some glue here, ended up being the model, at least out of the expansions that I've puttied so far, to use the most putty on. Now, mind you, I haven't even puttied most of them. I still need to do the dragon. Um, there was a big part of the Lonely Tree, which is the only other model that I've painted. In fact, I painted it before this, but because you can encounter this earlier in the timeline, I wanted to make sure that this one was point posted first the lonely tree will eventually come along but that's also a much longer video and will take me more time to do uh, regardless back to the thing in hand which is the assembly itself so the mandibles just go on the front as is the big weird hands go on i ended up actually pinning this model later to the base i believe i did it with one of the front hand feet things but yeah um i only did one pin the teeth weirdly are its own separate piece from the baby face part this has a lot of things of just like there's a reason with printing and stuff like that why it's done like that or like mold making and yeah i disconnected this and put it back together because i was just not a fan of the gaps that were in there doing so helped me minimize them on one side but yeah so much putty was needed for this thing and then on to the Face arms. Oh, I hated these. I hated assembling them, figuring out where they went. Uh, not they needed their own assembly, but I hated uh, attaching them. And painting them was a pain. So, speaking of painting, I, I want to get into this before I get to the actual painting. I decided to um, experiment with this model with a lot of light effects, uh, particularly the object light, uh, object source light effect of using the angler fish globe on its head so that basically being the source of light for the model itself and painted it in two completely different styles my usual paint style that i use for king of death and a lot of my models which is my standard paint style which is slightly dark but more in a realistic sense and then my dark paint scheme for majority of the body as well as pretty much anything that wasn't directly hit by the light which is what i use for Dark Souls the board game and any model that I want looking super super dark. So there's the model mostly completed. The base itself is just needed. This is nine space base and yeah have a little bit of trouble keeping things in frame throughout this whole video. This is first off the assembly is years before painting over two years because uh, I assembled all this stuff right away and I saw some of it just not even primed right now or as I said earlier not even puttied getting this thing to stay on its base was a pain but again I pinned it later because yeah that was definitely needed so here's the model all the prep work is done and out of the way because I stopped filming that a long time ago the big thing that I did to begin with and I also did this with the infernal gates for war machine hordes infernal army was I just literally primed it twice, um, or primed one half white, or in this case, the lit part white, and the dark part black. It came out pretty well, but I had to paint a lot of things like the base itself. I also wanted shaded, as you can see, which I really love how that came out, but also like getting the finer parts of where this would be shaded and where it wasn't. 
Honestly, I don't really like too well how the shades match in terms of the final product, but again, this was an experiment, a first-time thing, and it's good enough for me that I don't want to redo it. Like, it's not great is my point. Like, I still like it, how it came out. So, I'm doing a lot of dark grays, just completely dry brushing right onto the black. That's how I usually do my dark paint scheme is just dry brush things on. And yeah, so the video is sped up extra here for this dry brushing, painting in the gray for the lip part, which starts here. And I had to do this very slowly because I wanted to make sure not to screw up where I had prepped the areas for what I want to paint in this. And the red for the mouth is also sped up, which I originally wasn't going to do, but I ended up doing it anyway because just, t uh, well, with all three of these, they take long. This is like just most of what took up painting the model at least that ended up filmed the base itself still took a while because there's a lot of nooks and crannies for that as there is with this model in general but that's my problem with the fact that i want to assemble models before painting them which has its own benefits but with these larger models or more detailed and intricate models it gets kind of annoying to get all of the specific spots and everything like there are just some spots on this model especially in the back underside part that just aren't painted at all and i i don't care like or they were more so covered up like missing primer spots so they're just black uh but they also really didn't need any details and i usually follow the logic of if you can't reach it in this stage uh it can't be seen easily and if you can't see it well then you won't even know about it. And that's just a different point entirely. But yeah, so here's a lighter gray than what I was using for the base coat of the dry brush onto the black, but it's not much lighter. And it's pretty much, this is what its flesh would look like lit as opposed to, well, the rest of it being dark. Uh, this is what I use to highlight the shadowed areas more, but eh. And yeah, this just ends up covering everything. The nooks and crannies on this, like I said, were getting kind of annoying. The arms, like I said earlier, were a pain just to make sure to not cross over into the black and everything. And again, I have a bit of trouble keeping this in frame. Still was working on that at the time that I painted this, which was nearly a year ago from recording this. Uh, probably something like eight months. And I've gotten a lot better since then. Had actually a lot of practice with the... Uh, the two recent Legos that I filmed more than anything. So yeah, I haven't posted those yet, but uh, regardless, it gave me a lot of practice because it's still the same uh, camera rig and everything. It's just not over the painting mat. It's just on a table instead. But yeah, more gray. Yeah, big giant model kind of thing. You know, this is going to happen. The Lonely Tree at least has a lot of intricate parts, so you'll be getting to see more things with that. Oh, I'm so dreading painting the dragon at some point. Oh, God, that's going to be such a pain. Eh, not so much difficult. I've got a large brush that I can use for that, but, like, recording it and everything, or more precisely editing it and just having to resist the urge from skipping a large portion of it, which I may do, because it's going to be a lot of the same color throughout that entire model outside the chest. So, as I was saying, the red part's also sped up as well, but its mouth is just gaping wide open with the mandible split in the bottom. I was debating having the teeth blocking part of the light and painting the upper part of the mouth dark, but I just kind of went, nah, teeth don't really especially jagged like that block too much light and i would have been in just a small part so i just really didn't bother and it would have looked kind of odd also it would have meant me feeling the need to paint the back side of those teeth uh, like in the dark paint scheme as opposed to the front where they get painted as they do then well on to the nails or i don't know if these are toenails or fingernails because they're hand like Heat, uh, whatever not really important they're definitely i looked at a, for a lot of this model in general i looked at elephants and rhinos but i decided to go with something closer to like the nails that elephants have i believe they had nails and not you know hooves I, I can't fully remember i think it was a combination of the two actually and this is the same color that i also use for the teeth and the two teeth hook things on the mandibles 
that you see there. The Gorm is just a mixture of a lot of creatures. As I've jokingly said, it's just like somebody would might look at it and go, "What the hell is that baby face elephant angler fish tooth vagina thing?" That's a Gorm. A what? It's a Gorm. Speaking of teeth. Yeah, as you see me painting these in, you, you get more of a clearer picture of how many of them there are. But, yeah, there was a lot. And then painting the angler fish light globe thing. I think it actually is a proper name on at one of the hit locations. And I know it has a final blow, like you can take it as the item slash, you know, it, it might actually be a rare resource. I don't really remember. I haven't actually fought the Gorm a lot. But some quick painting of the eyes as well, which I believe I did something darker than white, that gray that I really like to use as a base coat for white. And, well, that was all the base coat. And then on to the ink wash, which I only do for the parts that are supposed to be lit up because... Why bother with the darker area when it's pretty much all black? It's meant to look like it's even heavier inked. It's just skipping the step of ink washing because there's just no intent or purpose, I should say, to do so. Uh, I uh, This was when I was still having trouble with my ink washes and getting them to work right. And I, I, that's working a lot better now. But yeah, it doesn't really work too well here. It works well enough. It works a lot better on the face and the mouth, with bringing out a lot of the details and everything. But on the arms slash legs, again, what? Uh, not too well. Great for the fingers themselves, but not the knuckles involved. Again, are they fingers or are they toes? But the eyes come out great. The mouth comes out great. A little bit too much gunk up there, so I had to rub it off. But hey, whatever. I was tempted to try to do something to represent the veininess of the eyes, but it goes back and forth also between the art, like different pictures, of whether it's like, hey, you've got the veins in the eyes like you normally would, versus they're just white. Uh, oh god, I had to look up some horrific stuff for visual reference. Like, milky eye was just like, ugh. The things you have to look up for visual reference for Kingdom Death just gets pretty bad. Uh, note that I did not ink wash the globe. I uh, want to leave that as bright as possible. Uh, I believe I end up highlighting it later as white just to make sure, because why not? A little bit extra here and there. Uh, and I do gloss it after the fact as well as the eyes, but I don't do a lot of that kind of stuff in these videos. They just, like, there's certain levels of finite work where it's just like nope I this is too small for me to film so then on to the highlight I end up skipping the darker part because it doesn't look that much different in video like up close does but and you can kind of tell because again now it's matching what was the original color of the lit up areas but now it's just okay quick highlight of you know, one of my lighter grays, uh, the second lightest one, I believe. Not the one that I use as a base coat for white, but yeah. And yeah, that's majority what it is. Some pink ends up being on the inside of the mouth because it's still flesh. Uh, I didn't want to try, honestly, too hard to make it look like a vagina, but oh god, they do a great job with that. Uh, with the skull, because yeah, this is one of the more body horror-ish monsters, because... Yeah, it's still not the Sunstalker, which I don't know how I'm going to deal with that for YouTube. Or the Forge God, which I don't own and I wouldn't even try to get on YouTube. Uh, ugh, I'm not even going to mention why, because yeah, that's bad enough. And then some white for the bone, nails, and the eyes. And getting in some pink little bits on the inside of that little, you know, where all the gunk collects in eyes. It was that last bit there. But that's the model in its entirety, all done and everything. It was great to experiment on. Could have turned out a little better, but I'm still very pleased with it. Always going to prefer it over a non-painted model. Hell, the primer just for the black and the white made the model look a lot better than a basic gray model but that's all for now thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did feel free to press that like button if you think somebody else will enjoy this 
feel free to share this video. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press the dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. And if you want to comment in general, feel free to, such as, would you like to see other models painted sooner rather than later? Especially those art models that you've seen me do in unboxing videos. Or would you like to hear me talk more about Kingdom Death? Still working on my detailed overview. The hunt video, again, is hours of film to sort through, and I'm still catching up on a lot of unboxing videos and painting videos and other things. So, one thing at a time. But also, would you like to hear me dive into lore or do some pretty much anything with Kingdom Death? Uh, again, one of my favorite board games and always willing to do more work on it. And if you want to see more like this, be it more painting videos, my unboxing videos, my board game overviews, all three of which I do for Kingdom Death Monster, and anything else you might want to see on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!